Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to have a look at Regatta OS. This is one that several people have asked me to look at. It's been on my list for a while, so I'm like, hey, let's do Regatta. People keep talking about it. So you can head on over to their website, which is at uh, regattaos.com, and it is not written in English by default, but there is a button over there to uh, view the English version. So uh, we are running this on the English version. So this is uh, Regatta OS 1901. Before we dive into this, um, I looked for it on DistroWatch. It's not there. It's under the category of distros that have an issue with, uh, um, I think it's language, locality, or licensing issues. And I'm not sure which one of these it is. Um, we can presume it's maybe the language, but I don't know for sure. So you won't find it on DistroWatch for that reason. But let's go ahead and have a look at their website, which is the limited extent of information that I have found on this one. So, and I haven't gone digging, by the way, so there's probably more out there that I haven't found. Anyway, uh, Regatta OS 19.1 was designed from the ground up to be a leaner operating system so you can more easily get what you what's really important to you, adding that new technologies you have... Uh, everything you need, get the most out of your PC, whether you're doing simple everyday tasks like opening apps and files or enjoying your favorite games or creating content. So uh, basically they will have the ability to, they have some things allegedly in here for gaming. We will not be able to test that because we're doing this on a virtual machine and I can't really test the gaming functionality in a virtual machine. But if it looks promising enough, I'll spin it up on bare metal and see if I can, see, let's see if this is the distro that can solve my issue where I need to play a couple wine games and I need to play play uh, a couple Steam games. That would be a neat thing to try out, right? Um, so who knows? We'll, we'll figure it out. And they do have a game mode. I will be hunting for the game mode. Apparently, it's like an HTML-based store, but uh, we'll have a look at what it is. They also apparently have a more HTML-based um, uh, application installer, uh, is what I understand. But I just got it installed, and I haven't actually looked at it. And so we'll go ahead and get this guy booted up here in, in uh, just a second. Though before we do that, what I'm going to mention is the installation itself. Uh, it is your basic uh, a Plasma installer. It does run Plasma. So it is a basic Plasma installer. Um, but it does actually have the, it, it has like an OEM install to it. And so when you first do the installation, you're not setting up any, you're not setting up your locality, you're not setting up your um, usernames, even some of the software waits until you're done, although you don't have any options. And then you get the installation finished and then you reboot the system and then you can set your locality, your username, your passwords, and all of those other options. So we'll go ahead and uh, give this guy a second here to get booted up and see what happens. It does seem to be a little sluggish there. Uh, it is uh, booting full screen. That's no big deal at all, so that works. But I'm noticing one thing I really am noticing on Virtual Machine is that it is fairly laggy. That is not a fact of the reason it's on a Virtual Machine. I know some people are going to say, it's on a Virtual Machine. You can't test distributions on a Virtual Machine. Yes, you can. In fact, if your distribution does not work on a Virtual Machine, I generally don't really want to look at it um, very much beyond that because... This is how people test things, is in virtualization environments. But what I'm saying is that as I'm looking around, you can kind of see the mouse there. It really is dropping frame rate a lot. And so that, is, to me, is a little bit concerning. I'm not completely sure what is up with that. Uh, let's have a look at our uh, system monitor, see what this guy looks like. Uh, let's see. So we're only running on, like, 0.5 gig, but it is... It feels sluggish. I'm not sure if this is running X or Wayland or what. All right, so this is out of the box, the installation. Like I said, I got it installed, set up my username, and I did nothing else. So this is what we have. So we have our you know, keyboard layout. We have software updates, <clears throat> vaults or volumes. Let's go ahead and have a look at our software updates. So it's just our Plasma updater. It's refreshing the software list, and we'll have the ability here to see the updates as that's done. Looks like we have uh, Firefox. We have VLC. There's a Regatta OS store. We have Dolphin. Uh, let's go ahead and look at, um, what's it called? About, about System. 
All right, so we are on Plasma version 5.12. I just downloaded this today. I think that's an older version. I haven't installed the Plasma for a while. I can't remember. I thought, thought 5.14 was current, but I, I could be wrong about that. Uh, KDE Framework 5.5, Qt uh, 5.9, kernel is 5.5. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and Wayland Compositor. Okay, whoa, what's up with that? I'm not sure if that was because of our updates um, or if we accidentally clicked something, but this is the Regatta OS store. All right, let's just go ahead and have a look at the store. Before we do that, let's go ahead and have a quick look at the software installed by default. So games out of the box. We have uh, Regatta OS Game Access. We have Steam Toys. So that's Regatta o Access again. So the same thing's in their menu twice. That's bloat. Double listing menus, bloat. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, it looks like there's not a lot else on here. Yeah, we got like, there is there is a web browser. So it is. it has, does have Yast. So I'm guessing this is based on OpenSUSE. It says it's ground up, but I guess it is based on OpenSUSE. Um, the fact it has Yast in there. Um, where was it? <clears throat> no, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to open Yast. Wine tricks. Okay, well. And under my super secret password, it's definitely not one, two, three. So our Yast Control Center. All right. Okay. Well, that's that. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, have a look at how we install some games here. So we have Steam. Ooh, look at that. We can play Doom. Ooh, that was GIMP. <clears throat> go ahead and click on GIMP. Uh, let's see. So we have, let's see, where's everything coming from here? So we have Discus down here inside of this. Um, some people don't, I don't know as much about Discus as I would like. Uh, it is starting to become kind of big and putting all over the place. I really don't want a system that's like this embedded in my operating system. I think this is a really big problem. Um, because we're causing some external access on things. I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. All right. Hopefully that still loads and installs. I'm not sure if I have to stay on that page. It didn't give me any, any issues. Let me go back to the page. It looks like I probably have to stay on that page to while the install finishes, I guess. I don't know. Oh, maybe not because I got two of them running now. Uh oh, I have two of them running now. And this is the problem with having a installer that functions like this, because in the one case it's trying to install and I didn't realize they'd go back in the application. So I'm not sure if the second one's actually working or not. Let's go ahead and close this out. Um, that's wine tricks. I'm never a fan of seeing wine tricks installed um, out of the box um, on anything. Um, I want to cancel. I want wine tricks to go away. Uh, the reason is when you have wine installed on a system, you will open your Linux system up to potential computer viruses. And that is an issue. And um, I would rather wine be installed. Now, there is a way you can take a approach where you can you can have a menu item to install wine if you happen to want that type of access in your system. And I'm okay with that. But the application itself being on the uh, being on the uh, the computer, I think, is kind of problematic. Okay, let's see. Did GIMP get installed yet? Well, it's not going to be under Internet. No, it's not going to be under Firefox either. I see. I like this menu, but it's the computer is slow and sluggish on the virtual box, and so it's kind of causing me some issues. I'm not sure if GIMP got itself installed or not. Let's have a look. Let me try doing a search for it. Okay, so it is there. All right. Let's check our version. We're going to load up the store again. So it is GIMP 2.10, so that's good. <clears throat> 
So now if I, okay, so if, here I've installed the application. I click back in on it and it's like, oh, okay, there it goes. Now it updated itself. Now it updated itself. All right. Uh, we, we, we will can cancel the, the incoming criticism. They, they have been deflected. They have been deflected. I think Steam is already installed, so that's all set up. There's Tuck's cart. Woohoo. All right. Okay, the next thing I want to look at, let's have a look at what this online game access happens to be. All right, so this is an online game access. So here's Battle.net, um, which you should not use if you like all humanity because Blizzard has lost their ever-loving mind. Uh, let's see, there's uh, GOG Galaxy. And I am not a gamer, guys. I have no idea what I'm looking at. I just kind of wanted to see what the uh, system was here. Uh, okay, Rockstar Launcher. And others, there's a League of Legends. So I guess you can go ahead and install stuff. Diablo, World of Warcraft, StarCraft 2. Okay. Let's just go ahead and click install on something. Let's see what happens here. So it looks like right now it's downloading DirectX. So I'm wondering if there's... Okay, so there's more at, there's more at GOG Galaxy. Let's see if there's more at Battle.net. So... Do you want to install Battle.net? You know, I'm going to click yes, because Battle.net Battle is one thing I could not get working before when I was trying to run my old uh, Warcraft 3 before they killed itself, and I decided to never use the updated version again. <laughs> uh, so now I actually found there is a there is a Warcraft 3 server that bypasses Battle.net, apparently, and... Uh, they lock the versions back on the same version I do because they think that the no, new way of doing Battle.net sucks. And so I want to kind of see if this actually will will load it. Not sure if uh, Battle.net uh, installed itself yet. It does not appear as though it's in the system. But if this actually works well, and uh, I could actually come in here, install Wine, uh, run the Wine games I wanted to play, and go ahead and do the um, uh, do the um, uh, the Steam game that I wanted. This might actually work out. So I kind of want to throw this on real hardware and uh, see if it's a solution to that. So anyway, let's see what else we got in here. Let's go and check our system settings. How many settings do we need for the love? I just want the basic system settings. I guess I guess we have to use YAS for basic system settings. They don't have the the yeah, they don't have the standard um KDE one apparently. It's still installing frameworks. We're gonna go ahead and just let this thing do what it wants. In the meantime, let's go ahead and have a look at our okay, this is this is the uh, KDE system settings. Come on. Workspace themes? There we are. So we are running a custom Regatta OS. We also have your basic uh, Breeze themes. Application styles. Online accounts seems to be set up. <clears throat> I would have to play with that off camera there. See how it works. We do have KDE Connect, and we have YAST for full system administration. So, I mean, I guess out of the box, um, my overall analysis, uh, if you're looking for something that allegedly will allow you to play a lot more of the games a little bit better, a more out-of-the-box gaming experience, this might be a good option to, to play around with. So I think I think based on what I'm seeing here, it's not excessively bloated. It seems to run fine. Um, I'd like to pl throw this on real hardware and see if I can get the, get that, just that coordination as it is right now for my quote gaming computer build that I have. I actually have to dual boot operating systems because one of them won't play the steam game and one of them won't play in the wine games. <laughs> uh, we'll see how this works. So it's installing the .NET framework still. This is going to take some time. So we're just going to go ahead and, uh, wrap up the video and uh i'll maybe i'll leave a comment as to how that happened to work 
So there's your Regatta OS. Uh, it does seem like a, a valid uh, distribution if you're looking at some of the gaming things. It does bring that unique factor to it. I don't like that they're putting Discus in their application installer and that it's all a web-based installer. I'm, I'm not really sure I like that quite as much, but um, I guess that might be a matter of personal preference. I would be concerned, though, about that Discus because there is a separate privacy policy to a third-party company, and that is baked into the operating system. That is actually a big concern. So uh, with that, uh, let me know your thoughts about Regatta OS in the comments down below.